Matthew chapter 3 this morning. I've, I handed out most of the scriptures I'll be using other than uh, this long portion here in Matthew chapter 3 and then one, one later in Luke chapter 15. We're talking about the subject of repentance. And while you're turning there, let me just mention this. Uh, we are going to have a baptism after the service. Uh, we, oftentimes I get people ask me, what's that tank out there? Is that a, a spa? <laughs> Uh, it's just a, a tank for us to have uh, baptisms. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Arcanado are getting baptized this morning and becoming a, a part of our, our church, members of our church. I just thought I'd mention a, a couple of things. Um, I don't know if people think about this, but, you know, the church that's your church, uh, you need to be a member of. You need to put your influence there. And uh, there's different ways you become a member. When you get saved uh, in our church and we baptize you, that makes you a member. Uh, some people come from a, a church of like faith, and uh, they transfer their membership. And we write to their former church, and they say, oh, yeah, they're great people, or watch out for them, or, you know, <laughs> whatever. And uh, we, we take them with transfer. And then others are, are, are baptized. And uh, we ask people who, who don't have Baptist baptism, or script, what we believe is scriptural baptism, uh, to be scripturally baptized. And um, I, I think membership is important. Uh, it's important to me that this is my member. If I get out of bed and my arm stays in bed, I get real upset. It, it bothers me. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's the picture that, that God uses. We're members of a body together. And uh, there's a commitment there. And, you know, in the bullets, and I've put some things of, about membership, what you should expect from your church and what your church should expect from you. And, and both of those are true. There's a responsibility both ways. But, you know, don't forget, a church is just people. It, it's Baptized believers that have banded together to, to serve the Lord together. We use the word, we have covenanted together. Yeah, we've made a, a promise before God. We're going to serve the Lord together. It, it's a great thing that God has given us. It's one of the best tools God's given you. you, you know, when you're in trouble, man, you need to have a church. Uh, when, when you're blessed, you need to be a blessing to others who are in trouble. You need to be a part of a church and encourage you. I, I, I don't want to give you two messages this morning, but uh, Matthew chapter 3 you know, the more I, I look at this, the more important I think uh, this subject is. We're, we're in a series of just basic Christian beliefs. Uh, we've looked at salvation, and, uh, the triunity of God, and, and so on. And today we're at looking at the subject of repentance. This is the first mention, the first use of the word in the New Testament is here in Matthew 3. Let me read verses 1 through 12. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid under the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So those are uh, the verses that God gives us there at the beginning of, of Matthew chapter 3. Repentance. You know, as you, as you see this, you, see, you begin to see the importance of repentance. This was, uh, this was the call of John the Baptist. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But you know, not only was it John the Baptist's call, uh, this is what Jesus preached as well. If you have those scriptures this morning, you'll, you'll find all of these there. I thought it was important enough that you, that you have them uh, as, as a record. In Luke chapter 24, uh, verse 46, this is kind of the great commission from, from Luke, 
when he says, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. That was uh, Jesus' command, preach repentance. Uh, when you get into the book of Acts, uh, it was the apostles' message. Uh, Acts chapter 2 and, and verse 38, uh, when P Peter was preaching there on the day of Pentecost, uh, he said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. His call was, repent. Uh, it was Paul's message. Acts chapter 20. Uh, I remember when uh, we were in Bible college, churches used to have the theme, a church with Acts 2020 vision. Uh, and it's just talking about a church that's going out and sharing the gospel. Well, verse 21, he says, testifying both to the Jews and to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the message we have. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Earlier, uh, he had said in Acts 17 that God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Man, you know, the more you look at this, uh, you see how important it is. Uh, later, uh, Peter says in, in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You see the contrast there? It's repent or perish. God wants us to, to repent. It's important. And as an important subject, uh, we should understand it. Uh, the word actually means a change of mind. Uh, the word repent literally means uh, a change of mind. That means we, we have to understand something to repent. You know, it's not just a physical thing. It's, it's something that has a, a meaning to it. And one of the things we have to understand is, is about sin. And quite often when I talk to people and ask them, if you died, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? The most common answer I get is, yeah, I think I would. I've been good. I've asked people in prison for, for all kinds of terrible crimes. I've asked prostitutes. I've asked, you know, lots of people. And the answer is the same. Yeah, I think I'd go to heaven. I've been good. Let me tell you, they need to repent. They need to change their mind. They've not been good. Now, the reason I say that is that what's, that's what God says. God says there's none good. You know, when God looks around, we're, we're all the same before God. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're not God. And that's the standard, is the holiness of God. It has to have an understanding of, of sin. It has to have an understanding of faith. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he said that we preach repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. I shouldn't point different direction. I should point the same direction. Uh, uh, we have to understand faith. We, we worked for some years in uh, the town of Fremantle in Western Australia. And uh, let me tell you, Fremantle is very Italian. Uh, I got taller when I moved to Fremantle. I remember I was in a crowd one time and I was looking over everybody's head. And I'm not tall, but this, these are these short Italians. <laughs> And uh, I've had people tell me, I've invited them to church. They said, no, I can't come to your church. I'm Italian. <laughs> and what they meant was they were Catholic. And, uh, you know, for them to trust Christ, they would have to change their mind. And, and we realized, and I, I don't mean this as an insult, but it was very tribal. For them to trust Christ meant they would have to turn their back on their family, on their heritage, Almost their country, <laughs> although there are Baptists in Italy, uh, anyway. Uh, and to repent means to change your mind. And, and it can be very difficult. Uh, it's hard to admit that you've been wrong. Man, some of, uh, some of us struggle with it more than others, but we all struggle with it. Uh, who, are you, who are they trusting? Who are you trusting? Uh, repentance involves changing our mind about what or who we believe. And it's so important to understand that. Now, the other side of it is this. Uh, Christians can repent as well. Uh, when sin is in a Christian's life, uh, a Christian needs to repent. Uh, we think of repentance mainly involving salvation. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, if you've read the books of Corinthians, 
Uh, that's written to the church at Corinth. Man, they had some problems. <laughs> uh, there was sin. And uh, he was telling them, you, you need to repent. And in uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 21, he says to them, he says, lest when I come again, well, in verse 20 he says, I fear lest when I come I shall not find you such as I would. And he says, lest when I come again my God will humble, humble me among you and that I shall bewail many which have sinned already and have not repented. He's talking to a church there. Listen to the things he men mentions of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they've committed. Now, these were church people. These were Christian people. And they needed to repent. They needed to change their mind about what was right and good for a Christian to do. Uh, if you read the book of Revelation, uh, he, it's written to several churches. He talks to seven different churches. And, and many of them, he says, you need to repent. You need to remember where you came from and do the first works. You need to repent. And you know, repentance is different than just being sorry. Uh, look, look, well, if, I think I've written it out there. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and uh, verses 9 and 10. 2 Corinthians 7, uh, verse 9, he says, Now re I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. And, and notice the contrast here. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Let me tell you, our world has plenty of sorrow but it doesn't have plenty of repentance. There's people in Australia, all around the world, who are sorry that sin affects them. Man, it's, it's ruining homes, it's ruining lives, uh, taking away brain cells. We, we had guys in Bible college who'd done drugs, you know, before they were saved, and they'd never get back what they could have been. You know, there's, there's a sorrow for, uh, that, that sin brings, but, you see, it's not enough just to be sorry. The Bible says the sorrow of the world worketh death. Man, the world's answer many times is, is suicide, isn't it? And the devil laughs. It's like out of the frying pan into the fire. Uh, the sorrow of the world worketh death. What we're talking about here is repentance. We're talking about hope. We're talking about seeing our sin and saying, wow, there's, there's a rescue for me. Godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. You know, when you trust Christ, there's no going back. Uh, he, he won't let go of you. Repentance means, first of all, a change of mind. Secondly, it means a change of heart. You can see that there in 2 Corinthians 7, can't you? Now, there's a sorrow. There's, there's emotion involved. But it's not just emotion. I remember hearing a, a pastor, I think it was Jack Hiles, said he'd, he'd led two different men to Christ. And he said the first one, boy, he really got emotional. And he thought, wow, this, this guy's really saved. The second guy, he said, he just hardly had no emotions. He said he was actually leaning against the door while he talked to him. And just no, no emotion involved. He thought, oh, I'm not sure that guy's saved. But you know, that, that first guy didn't last but a couple weeks, and he was gone. The second guy, he said, he's a deacon in my church. <laughs> and he found out later the guy had such a back problem that he was just leaning against the wall and just, you know, just bearing the pain while, while he talked to him. Uh, the emotion involved was all inside. It, it was the pain he was bearing. But he truly trusted Christ. It's not just your emotions. It's not just the tears, it's a change of heart. It's a change of heart. You know, there's, the Bible says there's a, a couple of different things that uh, will affect us in our heart. Uh, Jude, 20, Jude only has one chapter, so verses 22 and 23. He says, of some have compassion, making a difference. Others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. It, it, there's two main emotions or motives that cause people to come to Christ. You know the most common one is fear. People get their life in such a mess and they think, you know, they get down in the, in the pig pen and say, God, help me. It's common for people to say, yeah, I, you know, my life was such a mess and, and then I, I trusted Christ. And you know what the world says? They say, oh, well, God is just a crutch for them. No, God is life for them. <laughs> Uh, we, get, we get down where we see the consequences of our sin. You know, you can have a good life and still die and go to hell. I was, I was thinking about it just this morning. You, you know, there's people driving around. Drive, do you drive a yacht? Uh, riding around in a yacht, beautiful cars, homes, and don't know Christ. They have a beautiful life by the world standards, but they need to repent. 
Jesus said, what will it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Now, some are moved by that, that fear. Now, we had a man in Western Australia who would go around the country towns and show a film called The Burning Hell. It was scary. It, it showed people dying and going to hell. And uh, it, it was amazing. He had lots of people get converted. And, and many of them were genuine. And the reason was they didn't want to go to hell. That's a good reason to get saved. Others are drawn by the compassion and love of Christ. You know, they see, here's, here's a God who, who made me, who loves me, who sent his son for me, and, and the compassion and love. Uh, others uh, ha have compassion, making a difference. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 2 and, and verse 4 that uh, that's God's purpose in showing us love. He says, despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Listen, God doesn't have to be long suffering with us. He could, he could call in uh, his bills right now. He could send us to hell right now, but he's long suffering. He's good. He, he shows forbearance. And he's doing that to, to show us love. He sent his son uh, to do that. Repentance is a change of mind. It's a change of heart. But as well, repentance is a change of direction. Uh, listen, if you've really changed your heart and mind, what you do is going to change. The Apostle Paul, he was, he was on the road to kill Christians, and he met the Lord. He got converted. He repented. And then he began to preach Jesus. <laughs> it changed what he did. It changed what he was. Uh, it, it means... It has to do with, one of the things it has to do with is confessing sin. Uh, Psalm 33 and uh, verse 18. 38. I will declare mine iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. That's part of repentance. Seeing our sin and confessing it. Uh, in Luke chapter 18 and, and verse 13 is the, the record of, uh, of the man who was, was in the temple and, and he says, uh, said he wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven, but he smote upon his breast saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. When we sin, uh, that's when we're able to, to repent of it, confess it. Uh, forsaking our sin, uh, Isaiah chapter 55 and, uh, and verse 7 He says, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Let the wicked forsake his way. In Proverbs 28 and, and verse 13, this is a, a great verse to know. He says, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. You know, if we think we can just live with our sin, uh, God knows. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Repentance involves confessing, forsaking sin, and turning to God. Acts chapter 26 and, and verse 18. You can see I've got a lot of scriptures here this morning. That's why I went ahead and printed them out for you. Uh, Paul is talking about what, uh, what our mission is as Christians. And he says uh, it's to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. You see, there's a difference when you repent. There's a difference when you turn to Christ. It's the difference between darkness and light. It's the difference uh, between life and death. It's the difference between Satan and God. Uh, God says there's a, there's a change of direction. There's a change in our hearts and lives. If your heart and your mind are really changed, then what you do will change. God changes our heart. Repentance has to be combined with faith. I, I look at it as two sides of the same door. You know when you, when you swing a door, both sides turn. <laughs> and that's, that's repentance and faith. Repentance toward God, faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. You can't have one uh, without the other. <clears throat> look in Luke chapter 15, if, if you have your Bible there, and I want to give you an illustration. I want to give you Jesus' illustration of repentance. We call it the story of the prodigal son. Luke chapter 15. I'm going to read quite a few scriptures here. 
And uh, Jesus is talking to them about repentance. Uh, earlier in Luke 15, verse 7, he, he says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. In verse 10, likewise I say unto you, there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And then he gives this, this story, verse 11. He said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I'll say unto him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And his son said unto him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. What a story. That's the story of repentance. Here is a young man who, full of himself, full of sin, off he goes to live his own life, and he comes to the consequences of his sin. The Bible says that intellectually, his, his, he came to himself. His mind was changed. He came to himself. You know, some people go through life, and they never, that never happens. They never come to themselves. Emotionally, he responded. He realized, I've sinned. He had some empathy for his father. I've sinned against my father. And then he made a decision. I'll go to my father. He arose. He came. You know, the beautiful thing about this is his, the father was looking for him. As he came, a long way off, the father saw him, and he ran to him. He had compassion on him. And let me tell you something this morning. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, he's looking for you. He wants you to know him. He made you to know him. And repentance... It involves a change of mind. It involves a change of direction. As he, as he went down that road, he came to the place where the consequences of his sin put him in the pig pen. The Bible says he came to himself. And he arose. And he went. He was converted. He changed his direction. He changed his mind. God changed his heart. What a simple, beautiful illustration. So easy to see. And yet for many, it's so hard for them to see, it's hard for them to fathom that they could be wrong, so wrong that they deserve to go to hell. That's just hard for the average person to swallow. And yet that's exactly what God says. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. But you know, God made a way for us to come back. God sent His Son. God the Son came. And showed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, God is looking for you this morning. The Bible says, that we've read there in Luke 15, when people repent, heaven is glad. You know that heaven is watching? People are aware of what's, what's going on here in heaven. I guess the angels, uh, people who've gone before. It says that uh, likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. And he puts it this way, more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Uh, you know, heaven's looking for us to, to repent. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 3 and verse 19 that forgiveness and pardon come when we trust Jesus Christ as our Savior. Acts 3.19 says, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. We all have sins. And it's only by repentance and faith that God can take care of them. You know, religion tries to tell you all the works you can do. Oh, if you'll do this, 
That'll, that'll cover your sins. Listen, I don't want my sins covered. I want them taken away. And the Bible says, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. That's Jesus. God can deal with your sin if you'll repent and believe. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, we, we read the verse already, that you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You know, that's salvation. When you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Bible says God takes up residence in you. You become the temple of the Holy, Holy Spirit. That's an amazing thing. That's a, that's a big responsibility. And yet, the responsibility is, is God's. We become His, His vessel, His person, His child. Remember, real repentance is combined with faith. We're not talking about a work here. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, we're not talking about working your way to heaven. We're talking about trusting Christ. To be saved is to be converted. Conversion requires repentance and faith. You know, as I studied this this week, I thought, you know, this, this is where many people go wrong. Uh, they think that salvation is just a formula. It's just words. I, I'll never forget, I've shared this many times, a, a lady in our church some years ago, she came back Sunday night, and uh, she said, that this morning I said the words. And I went home and told my husband, and he said the words too. <laughs> now, I guess what she meant was she prayed to be saved. But... Uh, to them, it was just words. It, it wasn't a conversion. It wasn't faith in Christ. There was no repentance and faith. It, you know, life is, is not... It, a relationship with God is not a, a mystery. It's not mystical. It's not superstition. It, it's real. It's practical. When Jesus walked on the beach, He left footprints. He was a real person. When He died, He shed real blood. And that was for our sins. Uh, it's real. Conversion requires repentance and faith. And repentance is to turn from self and sin. That takes a change of mind. It takes a change of heart. You know, to most people, <laughs> we would say, I'm the most important person in the world. <laughs> now, you wouldn't say it about me. You'd say it about you. I was talking to a young man this morning. You know, we all have problems with selfishness. To, to repent is to turn from self and from sin. Faith is to turn to God. Listen, if you're turning, you've got to turn from and to and it, I know people who turn from sin and self, but they don't turn to God. They turn to something else. Listen, the only answer is faith in Christ. The Bible says, repent ye therefore and be converted. Converted means to turn around. Our part is repentance and faith. God's part is to save us. We use the word regenerate. He, he, he makes us alive. He gives us new life in Christ. You know, to become a Christian, you don't have to know everything that's in the Bible. I've been studying it. I was telling this young man this morning, you know, when I was in school, I didn't like studying, so God made me study the rest of my life every day. <laughs> That's what a pastor does, uh, one of the things. Um, you know, to, be, to become a Christian, you don't have to know everything in this book, but let me tell you, you do have to apply this book. Uh, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The way we know what to believe is what's in this book. Later in, in Peter, he says, being born again by the Word of God. It, it's God's Word that speaks to our heart. Uh, we're not looking for a voice or listening for a voice from heaven. We're not looking for an angel or God to stand at the end of our bed. God has given us the message. He's written it down. He's protected it over the years. It, it's amazing to have this book. People have tried to destroy it, and they can't. Someone has said, this, is, this book is like the, ha the anvil. It remains. The hammer's break and go away. <laughs> they keep trying to destroy it. God keeps it. And it's by the Word of God that we're, we're born again. And I've seen many people make confessions of faith but have no conversion. Be careful. There has to be a dealing with sin. The Bible says all of sin. It says the wages of sin is death. And there has to be faith in Christ. You know, you can get real sorry over your sin and never trust Christ. That, that's not enough. We need to be sorry for our sin, but we need to give it to the Lord and gratefully receive His forgiveness. That's repentance. The Bible says we preach faith, a repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Romans, chapter 10, and verses 9 and 10, he says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, 
thou shalt be saved. That's the gospel. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know, we've, we've looked at a lot this morning. Uh, the consequences of sin are great. It's hell. The consequence of sin is hell. But the love of God is greater. The love of God is greater. He offers heaven. And the choice is yours. God says, look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there's none else. Uh, I encourage you this morning. Uh, that's why I put all those scriptures there. I don't want you to think these are my ideas. Uh, this is what God says. Uh, we need to repent. There needs to come a time when you recognize that your sin has separated you from God. And by faith, you turn to Him and receive that forgiveness that only He can give. If you've never done that, the Bible says you can do it today. It's as simple. He says we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth. We just receive Him. You know, when I, I, when I struggle with my salvation, I go to Romans 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's God's promise. It's the work of the Lord. And God has done the work already. He offers it now to you as a gift. Many of you have received Christ as your Savior. Uh, maybe there's Christians here who need to repent. I don't, that, that's another sermon. Uh, but if you never trusted Christ as your Savior, uh, listen, repent and believe. Uh, let the Lord take your sin. Don't go through life sorry. Be sorry and confess it to the Lord and let Him give you His joy. He'll begin to give you the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. All the things that you really want are found in Jesus Christ. Let's go to him in, in prayer. With their heads bowed and in an attitude of prayer. The Lord is speaking to your heart. Listen, now is the time for you to respond to him. Father, we, uh, we are so grateful that you know us and love us. Father, you know our sins. You know our weaknesses. You know our failures, the things that others would be ashamed of if they knew. And Father, we, we're just so thankful that you've looked on us with compassion. You've sent your son. And Father, you've, you've made it possible that we can be your children. Lord, I pray if there are those this morning that are not saved, oh, Father, that today might be the day of their salvation. Help them by faith to turn from sin and by faith to turn and fo follow you. Lord bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to go to page 157. It'll be on the screen here as well.